Hi everyone, it's Nancy from StampAndShout.com. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator and I thought I would pop on real quick right here and show you how to make a really really cute candy bowl. Valentine's Day is just two days away and this is a really quick and easy project that you can make. It doesn't need a lot of supplies, basically a piece of cardstock and your candy. So I'm going to get started right away and stay to the end because I am going to show you samples of some of the other candy bowls that I made. But to get started, here's a picture of one that I made the other day for Valentine's Day. And what's nice about this project is, like I said, it does not take a lot of supplies and you can make it for any occasion. So again, stick around to the end because I'm going to show you some other samples. So we're going to start off with a piece of cardstock that is ten and a half by six and a quarter and we're going to score it on each side at one and one quarter inch increments. So with the ten and a half inch side at the top, I am going to score it at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, and 10. Then we're going to turn it and score it at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and five. James Corden is and five. Okay, so now we also need to do some angle score marks. So I'm going to bring in my ruler. And I'm going to bring back in my stylist here. So if you can see this score line right here, this bottom one, this is where I'm going to mark 5 8 inch um, increments. I just want to get the center of the square. And I'm going to do the center of the first square, and then I'm going to skip a square and go all the way across. So I'm going to start with this first square. And all I'm doing right here is marking the middle of that square. So I'm just going to give it a little jig jag at 5 eighths of an inch and I'm skipping the next square and going to the next square and I'll pick this up and show you again when I'm all done. So I'm skipping the next square and I'm marking 5 eighths right here, skipping the next square and marking 5 eighths again. So we found the center of each one of those squares. So I did I marked that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. So now I'm going to do a little bit of angling, just scoring. So I'm going to go to the corner of the square, and I'm going to angle down to that little notch that we made. And as you can see, I'm going back and forth a few times because I really want to get a strong score line there. And then I'm going to do the same thing the other way. So I'm going to get a diagonal. I'm going to, It's kind of like making a V in here. And I'll pick this up, and I'll show it to you. So you can see what I did there. I marked the center of the square and then I did a diagonal and I'm going to do that on every other square and this is the second row of squares. I'm doing the, di the diagonal scoring on every other square. So let me get that done. And again, I'm going back and forth because I want to make these diagonals pretty strong. So when we put our box together, it'll go together nicely. And I'm using Stampin' Up! cardstock. And Stampin' Up! has the best cardstock that I have found to do boxes and projects of this type. It's very, very high quality. It's very strong. So see, I'm going back and forth, and it's not going to tear, and it's not going to create a hole. So just want to mention that. You can shop for Stampin' Up! supplies with me. You can go to my blog, www.stampinshout.com. There's a Shop Now button. And in the description below this video, I will put links and I will tell you the supplies that I used. So if you do want to shop, you'll have all that information right there. Okay, so we got all our scoring done. And now I'm going to bring in my bone folder and I'm going to crease all these score lines really well. So 
So whenever you make boxes or projects like this, you want to make sure that you do use your bone folder because you want to have a really good crease because that'll just make your box stay together nicely. Make it go together nicely. You're going to be surprised at how easy this is. And again, it's good for all occasions, but of course, I'm making this one for Valentine's Day. I do have details of this on my blog too, so if you go to stampandshout.com, you're going to see pictures of some of these that I made and a little bit of the detail that I'm telling you right now, so you can kind of read about it. Okay, so we did that. And on these little angled ones, I am just going to take my fingernail and kind of kind of help it right now. You're going to see how easy it goes together, but just giving it a little crease to make it a little even easier for us when we get to that point. I'm just giving it a little fold. Like that. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of cutting. So over here we have a half inch strip that we scored. I'm going to cut the bottom square and the top, well they're rectangles, the bottom rectangle out, cut it away. We don't need that. And the top rectangle away. Okay, so now where these diagonal score lines are, that's going to be the bottom of our candy bowl. So I am going to cut up on these score lines that we made just up to the first score line. Every single one I'm cutting up on. Like that. And I'm only going up to the very first score line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut away every other square. Wherever there's a diagonal, I'm going to cut that square away. We don't need it. Get rid of that one. That one. That one. And this one. Okay, so that is going to be the bottom of our candy bowl. I'm going to flip it around and do some cutting up at the top. I'm going to flip it around. So on these score lines, I'm going to cut up every score line on the here, and I'm going up two score lines. Just like that. the bottom and there's the top. So now I'm going to bring in my tear and tape and with the half inch side on the right I'm going to put some tear and tape on the back. So you can flip it over and put tear and tape on or you can just do it from the front side but we're putting it on the back side here. So I'm just going to put some tear and tape right there. So again, there's the bottom, and I put the tear and tape right there. I flipped it and I put it on the back. So we can decorate it now, or we can do it when it's all done. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. So decorating it, we're going to decorate this line of squares right here. Actually, I think I'm going to decorate it when it's done so you can see which what area I am decorating. So let's go ahead and put this together. So let me get make sure this is this tape is stuck really well. I'm going to remove that tape. Okay. 
and I'm just going to fold this piece over and I'm just going to match it to that tape. It's pretty e easy, it matches perfectly like that. Okay, so now we've got our little circle made and we're going to make the bottom of the box. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to put some tear and tape on these tabs. tear and tape like that. So let me show you this one. So there's the top of our box, there's our circle, here's the bottom. I'm putting tear and tape on the inside like that. So I'm going to put that on all, all four. I'm going to do that real quick here. So now <clears throat> I'm going to take and remove the tear and tape. And I'm going to take opposite sides and I'm going to match that up like that. Okay? Then I'm going to take these opposite sides, I'm going to remove that tear and tape and pull them together and match them up. So I'm going to do one at a time. And this looks harder than it is, but with those angled score lines, it's going to go together nicely. So take one of those tear and tapes off. So I'm just going to kind of squeeze it where those angles are, kind of help it out. Like I said, you got to play with it a little bit, but it's not that hard. See, it's going together. I'm going to take this fold and match it up to that. And once you get it up there, just fold it down like that. Okay, so that one's made. You just have to play with it a little bit. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side here. So I'm going to kind of help those angled score lines a little bit. giving them a little crease here before I whoop, fold them together. This one here is being a little stubborn. There we go. Okay, so now I got those made. I'm going to remove the tear and tape and bring it all the way into this one here. So I'm just going to help it along. close it up. Okay, so that's the bottom of our box. Now the top of our box is so simple. We have these flaps. I'm going to fold down one, fold it in half, and just fold these into the box. So we're just closing it up. You're going to come along to one where we did that tear and tape on that half inch that needs one more cut. And I never cut that until the end. Just put it down on the ground on the table I can do it easier. So I'm just folding it down and folding it into the box. Folding it down and folding it in. And these don't need any glue. They'll just stick in there. You don't have to glue them. You don't have to tape them. I put one extra piece of tear and tape when I was making the bottom that I didn't need. The very first one, when I folded it together, I only needed tape on one piece, but that's not going to matter. We're going to put our candy in there. So there's our little box, so now we're going to decorate the outside here. And depending on your theme and your color, you can decorate it however you want. Generally, what I do is I take a one inch square. So I have a one inch um, square punch that I use, or you can go ahead and use your cutter and cut out squares. So basically all you would do if you don't have this one inch um, punch is take a strip and cut a one inch strip and then turn it and cut one inch squares 
that moved on me. Okay, so you just cut and cut your one inch squares if you're using designer series paper or whatever and those fit perfectly on there. So this is a one and a quarter inch square when you're done and I decorated it with one inch squares. However, today for this one that I'm making, I switched it up just a little bit. So I have my squares already cut and I cut four in the designer series paper and then I went ahead and in the basic white I did these little X's and O's because my tag is going to say hugs and kisses. So I decided to cut out X's and O's and I'll show you what I used. These are the many heart dies and I used this little X and O cut out right there and I just put it on my little square and I cut it, ran it through my machine and cut out X's and O's. And the only other thing that I did different was these are cut to just smaller than one and a quarter. So once it gets to decorating, you can kind of do it however you like. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use snail. And I'm going to go ahead and attach this to my square. So we have eight squares to decorate. So I'm going to do every other one one with designer series paper and one with the X's and the O's. Like that. Go ahead and pick up whatever's in front of me. So I'm skipping a square for the designer series paper. And my X's and my O's. Isn't that cute? So I'm just going to, let's see here. I think I'll make them go the same way. Maybe I'll have them go every other way. I'm going to have them go the same way. So that's half the fun is decorating these. And again, I'm going to show you a couple other samples that I made. So if you're watching my video and you like it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and let me know. Okay, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need one more. I got it too. All right, let me let's see which I want to make sure this goes the right way. It's gonna go like that. And then the last one. Then we're going to stamp a quick sentiment and then put our candy in and make our tag. So there's our box. What do you think? Make sure you give me some comments here. Say you like it or whatever you're thinking or just say hi if you don't want to leave a, a comment like that. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to bring in a scrap and I'm using the sentiments from Oval Occasions and I'm going to use Hug and Kisses. And this stamp set coordinates with the dual oval punch, which is a great punch to get. This is one of the staples that you'd like in your um, in your supplies of stamping because it's great for sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and tight and punch out a scalloped oval like this, and then I'm going to stamp on a little white scrap. I'm going to bring in my ink and stamp hugs and kisses. that right there. Then I'm going to bring in some magenta madness and I'm going to put some hearts on here. And I'm going to stamp off twice because I don't want them very dark and stamp right over the hugs and kisses, this, the sentiment we stamped. Then I'm going to bring my oval punch back in and I'm going to go ahead and stamp out this oval. So when you're using this punch, what I suggest is to use strips of paper and they slide in like that. That way you're not wasting paper. If you were to stick in a great big piece like this and try to 
punch out, you'd be punching two at once. So when you use the little strip, you can just fit it right into that little bottom oval and punch that out. So I'm going to layer these two together. I'm going to put this off to the right a little bit because I'm going to punch a hole on this side. Let me find my hole punch. All right, now we're going to put our candy in. And so what I did on mine was I just took a baggie and I cut off the top like that. Throw that away. Go ahead and put this in your candy bowl. And I'm adding these dark chocolate Hershey Kisses because that's what my Valentine likes, the dark chocolate. And it, these candy bowls hold so much, okay? You're going to be surprised. I'm just going to close that up and I'll bring in a little bit of white twine here and tie this up first with this just to give it an initial closing like that. I'm going to tie it in a knot like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and attach my, my tag and then I'm going to add a ribbon. And again, stay to the end because I'm going to show you some other samples made for different occasions. So I'm just sliding that on this little thin white twine and I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. So there's one curling up on me. Okay, I'm just going to cut that short and then I'm going to bring in some ribbon and tie a bow. Ooh. Let's clear this up. So this is a quarter inch ribbon, so it, it's really uh, perfect for doing something like this. And there we have it. Hugs and kisses. We got our Hershey kisses in there. Let me fix my bow, please. There we go. The tag goes right on top. So what do you think? Isn't that cute? Simple, right? And it's really sturdy. It's very, very sturdy. So again, if you're interested in getting some of this cardstock, this is the real red cardstock, and it comes. We have Stampin' Up has it in so many gorgeous colors. Um, like I said, oh, this one here, that's that's also the red one. I thought I had a purple one that I was going to show you, but anyway, let me show you a couple others. So there's Valentine's. Here's another one that I did for Valentine's, and this one I punched out some little hearts and just snailed them or glued them on there. And this one says, a little treat for you. That's one of the sentiments that's in the Oval Occasions stamp set that coordinates with the Oval Punch. So there's that one. Here's my little pot of gold for um, St. Patrick's Day. So this one I put hugs and kisses and it has the gold Hershey Kisses in there. And then I stamped the um, clover and that's also in this stamp set. Then I put a little tiny clover um, right there. Actually, that's the one from the stamp set. And this was actually three little hearts that I stamped. And I'm trying to think where I stamped that from. I think that was from the, um, from the current heart stamp set that's out there. But that's three hearts with a little, a little stem that I drew on there. But I like the gold kisses in there for, for um, St. Patrick's Day. And then for Easter, I made one in Pear Pizzazz cardstock, 
and this is Oso Ombre cardstock or designer series paper and uh, let me see if I have that handy for you. That designer series paper is free in the Celebration catalog and look at all this paper that you get. So Celebration is going on now to the end of February. There's the Celebration catalog. When you spend $50 you get to pick something free out of that uh, Celebration catalog and this is the Oso oh Ombre paper that I chose as one of my little free freebies and I put the three different colors on the outside. I thought that was very Eastery. And then this little tag is again from the Oval Occasions. This little tag also is cute for the, the sentiment welcome little one or sweet friend. So that's that one. So there you go. So I hope you like today's projects. Go ahead and leave me a comment, ask your questions. Um, I'm always here to answer them. You can shop with me if you'd like and share my video. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for being here. Don't be shy. Stamp and shout.